everyone, it's the Tides Changing here, and welcome to part 11 of Let's Build a Mediterranean House. Today we'll continue on the interior and finish the kitchen as well as the dining room. But before I got to that, the first thing I did was I changed the type of wallpaper I used, because someone pointed out in the comments that I did use the same wallpaper, and then I looked at it and kind of realized it looked weird to have the same type of molding all over the place, especially since that one is so ornate. So I only left that type of molding out in the hallways and then just put a simpler one in the rooms, and I do think it looks a lot better, so that was a good suggestion. So that's just what I'm going through doing here. I initially did it with just a baseboard in the laundry room and bathroom, but I felt like it was kind of boring to only have the baseboard, so I just put that same one that I put in the study in these two rooms, and I think it looks a lot better. And now I'm just about finished with that. I just have this wall and then this pattern wall here as well. So I think it is better to just use a simpler wall. Someone else also suggested that I make the wood there something a little bit richer because it was kind of dull looking. So I went and changed the color of that wood floor as well and I made it kind of a richer, more red hued wood that you can see here. So that does look a bit better. So yeah, thanks for those suggestions. And I'm just changing that in the study area as well. So now that I took care of those few things, I am going to move back to the kitchen. And what I first did was I, uh, I think I talked about this in the last episode, but I didn't really like how I had the, the island counters wrapping around. So I want to change it so on the one side I just had the regular counters, and then on the other side I had the island counter. So you know, it wasn't like I had it wrapping around, then those half walls, and then the sink, because I thought that looked kind of weird. So here I'm just scooting that counter right up to the island counters, and then putting regular counters in. And I do think that looks a lot better. It looks like, you know, a regular kind of counter island you would see in a house. And now I am putting in the other appliances since I hadn't put in a dishwasher yet. So I'm putting that in and a weird thing I noticed with these counters is that, as you can see, it darkened the color of the countertop when I put the dishwasher in. I don't know why I did that, but I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. And now I was just trying to change the colors to match. And I didn't really like that yellow, that color, because it just looks like a nicotine yellow, you know, like when someone smokes a lot and then it makes all the white stuff in the house have a weird, weird beige color, um, but it just looked kind of ugly, so I made everything the bright white that the dishwasher was, and it looks a bit better. And instead of putting a garbage disposal in this house, I just put that little trash can right there, because I didn't really want to put anything else underneath the counters, because as you saw with the dishwasher, it kind of distorts the color a little bit. So yeah, the less things under the cabinet's probably better. And I just put in a little microwave over there, and I was deciding whether I wanted to put in a food processor or a coffee machine, but the coffee machines are a little bit more on the expensive side, so I was just going through the food processors. And I put in that one right there from Supernatural since it ha was more old-fashioned looking, and I'm kind of go- like I said in the last part, I'm kind of going for more of an old-fashioned look with this kitchen. So I guess that's another reason why I didn't put in a garbage disposal. And now I'm just changing the color of those curtains there, because I didn't really like that plaid color that I had them. So I ended up going with a kind of flower pattern, which you'll see in a little bit. So yes, yeah, it's that one right there. It's kind of got plaid with some flowers on top of it, and I thought that was a nice kind of country look for it. And of course a smoke detector, in case your sims catch the kitchen on fire. I always forget to put those in my houses, but I remember to put it in this one. And I also want to put in a little rug there, um, but I noticed with this rug, it tends to make the patterns look really big. So the colors, I don't know, the colors just look weird on it. So I played with the colors a few times and I was pulling colors from the curtains, but the colors from the curtains were a little bit too loud. Like usually I like more subtle, neutral colors. So I tried changing the pattern around a few times and the color around a few times trying to find something I liked. So I played around with the colors a little bit more. And then after not really having anything look right with this type of rug, I end up just getting rid of it and using that same one in there. And this one doesn't make the patterns look so big, so it looks a little bit better. And I made the rug a kind of more neutral green color. I always end up using green and blue in my houses. I keep trying to use different colors, but I always just go back to green and blue. I guess because they're my two favorite colors and I just kind of look like more neutral earthy colors anyway, so yeah, I guess those are my go-to colors. But this bar still here, I did make kind of a light, more washed out pink color, so that was something different. So I guess, I don't really know how I feel, feel about those bar stools though. But I decided to put that little picture thing on there again as, you know, just a nice little decoration. And 
I also wanted to have a soap pump and some paper towels since, you know, those are things you find in the kitchen a lot. So then I just moved the soap pump over there and then the paper towels right there next to them. But I didn't really like how the soap pump looked. Like, it's just, it's purple and you can't really get it to be a different color. I really wish you could because I don't like it being purple. But I also wanted to change the color of the kitchen tile or the type that I used. So I used that same tile that I used outside and just made it the same color and I think that looks a lot better in there. So now that that's done, I am going to do the walls in the kitchen since, you know, everything else is pretty much done. So I just put this tile right here and I'm trying to make it a similar shade of brown to the rest of the kitchen. So I'm just going to put it over all the walls now that that's done. And I think that's a good look. I mean, the kitchen's very brown, but like I said, I kind of go for neutral colors. So that's what typically happens. And now I'm just putting a wallpaper over there and trying to figure out, you know, color to use. And I initially did put that wallpaper on there just to see how it would look. But um, that looks kind of weird, having the wallpaper all over there. Like, it's kind of tacky, so I didn't end up keeping it. I mean, I guess it doesn't look that bad, but it was a little bit too tacky for my taste. So I ended up changing it to something else. And I kind of experimented with this plaid color, but that's weird to have a plaid wall. So I tried a few different pad patterns and I ended up going with with kind of a more subtle pattern, which is not this one, but I tried a few different ones first. I tried making the wall beige color, but I felt like using the beige kind of clashed with the floor since it's a different kind of tan. So, you know, if I was going to go with that, I had to make it something kind of similar to the floor color because I was trying to pull the tan color from the curtains. So I tried that, but like I said, it kind of, it, it doesn't really go right. So I didn't really like that color too much, so I tried a green again. But I think I said before that green is a little bit bolder than I like, and I guess more so with this house than usual. I'm trying to go with more subtle colors just because it's supposed to be a more old-fashioned home, and you normally wouldn't see just like really bright colors. But this is the type of pattern that I ended up using, and you know, it's kind of, it's, it's something other than just a plain wall, but at the same time, it's pretty subtle. But that was that same green that was too loud. I didn't really like those bar stools that I use there, so I decided to change it to something a little bit more subtle. So I use this one right here, and I think that one's cheaper anyway. So yeah, I think that looks a little bit better, but moving on, I changed that green color on the wall to be a little bit more subtle and neutral green color, which, yeah, that's the color that I went with. So this area right in here is going to just be a little eating nook area, you know, with a small table and some chairs around it. So I just use this plain wood table right here, and it has a very nice, you know, cute look. I really like that table, and you know, I use it a lot in older fashioned homes. And for the chair, I decided to go with this one right here, which is just that more ornate plain chair, you know, with no colored cushions on it. So definitely a nice, you know, old country looking type of chair. So now I'm just moving that back in there. And I'm hoping that they can still use the bar stools in the door. I mean, I think they can. Sometimes I'm surprised by the spaces that The Sims and The Sims 3 can get through. Like, they can definitely get through smaller spaces than the ones from Sims 1 and 2. So yeah, just putting a light under there, over there. And I got rid of that bi debug light that was in the dining room area. So there's just the one in the kitchen. But I'm going to keep that one because the kitchen is way too dim without it. And I don't have to put in a ton of lights to try and get it to be lit right. I also don't want a really dark kitchen, so I'm just gonna be leaving that one in there. Here you can get a really good look at how the kitchen's coming along, and I definitely think that this is one of the better kitchens that I've done. I also realized that I forgot to put some wallpaper over on that wall, so I took care of that. I wanted to put a plant in that corner right there, just as a nice little decoration, so I ended up going with this one right here that just kind of looks like a little table with a plant on it. You know, because I thought that would look nice, and I also felt like that wall there needed something else on it other than that one shelf. So I went and put in the one shelf that I put on the wall before, but got rid of. Because I realized that shelf there could move, but then this one can't. So I put that one up and then moved the other one I had in down lower. So now that wall has, you know, a bit more on, it looks a little bit better. Definitely looks better decorated. And I also want to put some wall lights in just so that area was better lit. So I put two of these lights in on either side of that. You know, it also added some nice wall decoration in too. And I changed the color of it to match, you know, the color of the handles on the cabinets. So yeah, that is pretty much the finished kitchen. And like I said, I really like how it looks. So now I'm going to move on to the dining room. And I want to have, I knew I wanted to have this hutch right here in. 
but it would have worked better if, you know, the walls were an even number. Because right there, I wanted to have, you know, kind of walls go out and then have it look like the cabinet was set into the wall, but that didn't really look right because there wasn't an even number of walls. So I tried experimenting with putting bookshelves behind it so, you know, I could have it like that. Which is what you see me doing here, so I'm just putting in three bookshelves behind it and then scooting it forward, but that looked kind of- it just looked kind of weird to have the bookshelf behind it. I also changed the color of the bookshelf to be that same more old-fashioned looking wood that it was, but a little bit lighter, and then, you know, I changed the color of the bookshelves too, even though I got rid of them because it looked weird. So yeah, I ended up getting rid of them and then just putting the hutch back against that wall right there and just kind of kept it like that. And I'm using the dining room table from the Mediterranean kitchen set. Since, like I said, I was just going to be using that set since, you know, it fit the theme perfectly and I made it the same kind of wood that the hutch was. So I really like that table. It's actually a very pretty table and I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of got what looks like grapevines wrapped around the legs, which is pretty neat. So now I'm just adding in the chair and then changing the color of the chair as well, you know, to be that same wood. And I also changed the color of the pattern on it to be the same pattern, but, you know, once again, a more subtle green since I kind of like the, you know, khaki, variants of khaki green. That's definitely the kind of green that I like best. So now I just moved around the table to be the other way and uh, I am centering it in front of that hutch right there. So it looks a little bit better and I really like how the furniture in this dining room looks. And now I'm just trying to pick out a nice fancy ceiling light to go over it. So I ended up going with a chandelier. So I ended up using not, well, I tried this one initially, but this was a store light and I guess I'm, well, I've already used a good bit of store content in this, but I'm trying to not to use too, too much. But I ended up going with that nice big chandelier that I'm pretty sure came with a base game and this nice little fruit thing as, you know, centerpiece for the table. And I just then changed the color of that to be a little bit different. I also got rid of those walls. I was using a setup color scheme since, you know, I wasn't really going to do that anymore. I'm now just changing the color of that chandelier to match the other lights that were in the, you know, I guess nook area over there in the kitchen. And I put in those same wall lights on either side of the hutch there to add some more additional light to this room. So there you can see it coming along. I also wanted to put some plants in here and I was kind of indecisive about the plants I wanted to put in. Like I wanted something kind of tropical looking, but all the more tropical looking plants were obnoxiously big and I didn't really want huge plants in there. I put this one in, but... And played around the colors colors a bit too, but it was a little bit too modern. And I also want to see how it looked to have counters going all the way across, but that was too busy. And plus I thought it might interfere with the Sims be able to get into the chair there on the end. So like I said, that plan right there was a little bit too modern. Um, I ended up putting in that one right there, which is from the Master Suite stuff. And I really like that plan and I use it a lot. And where that other plant was, I put in that same chair from the other room and change the fabric pattern of it to match the chairs. And now I'm just putting in, you know, a little painting over here on this wall. So I end up going with this nice little scenery painting and just change the frame to match the color of the hutch. So that is just about all the furniture in that area. And now I'm just putting in a rug on the floor there and using the same rug that I used in the kitchen and I'm going to end up making the rug green again. So I'm just changing the fabric pattern to be something a little bit different on it. And I also wanted to make the edges of it a that same pattern as well and made the edges green instead of being white. So there you have the rug. And I still had to put some curtains in, so I'm just getting these same curtains that I used over in the study and then putting them in. I initially tried to make them a red color to add some variety to the room. And that is all the furniture in the dining room, so now it is on to putting in the walls. For the wall in the dining room, I'm just going to be using the same type of wallpaper that I used over in the kitchen. So now I'm just putting that in there. So I wanted to make the wall in here a little bit more of a reddish color. So I made it this pinstriped color and I guess it's kind of more of a rust reddish color. So yeah, it's more of a brownish red. It's not really like a red red that I ended up making the room in. So that is the color right there that I ended up using. And I changed the color of the curtains to be green because I felt like it was weird to have that red and you know the red on the walls but I like the color of the walls and wanted to keep them that way so like I said I just changed the currents to be green and I think that looks a bit better 
And I also wanted to put a small painting on that wall there just so that there was something there and now I'm just changing the color of the frame of it. I didn't want the whole wall to be that pinstriped color so I ended up just making some of it one of the plain colors so I made it made a wall just the plain kind of rust color and just put that and left the wall with the hutch on it being that pinstripe so it's kind of like an accent wall and the rest of it is just plain. So that is the finished dining room and I really like how it looks like I really like the style of this house and how it's coming along and I just put some of that tile in the foyer, foyer area just to kind of separate it a bit. Here I'm taking out the ceiling that was above the area where the ceiling will be vaulted and I'm just gonna leave the edges being not vaulted so I had to put some wall across there and I'm gonna have to lower it down to that quarter height. I also wanted to fix you know the vaulted ceiling not showing so now I'm trying to get it to show again. So I had to delete that wall and then delete the wall there on the edge for whatever reason and hold shift over it to get the ceiling to show up. So yeah, there you can see the vaulted ceiling. It is now working again. So now I just have to lower that whole wall to be the one fourth level height. And I'm just doing that so you don't have the edges being normal ceiling height and then you just look through and you see the floor and then the ceiling above it. That makes any sense. So I just have to put the wall in afterwards and then just lower it down. I'm doing that on the other side now. And underneath of there will be a fireplace since, you know, I feel like a room, you know, a living room this grand has to have a fireplace in it. Here you can once again see the finished dining room as well as the kitchen. And now just have to go over here and mark off where the fireplace I mentioned is going to go. I guess the entrance to that bedroom over there will be off of the foyer. And then I looked over here and then realized that somehow the ceiling one went missing so, you know, I had to go in and fix that. But that is about all that I did in this episode. I hope you guys liked it and, you know, give a thumbs up if you did. The next part will be up on Tuesday. Thanks for watching and bye!